I've had another sticker come into the shop too um, from Tom at Hilltop Machine Works. Um, if you haven't been over and visited Tom's channel, he's just, he's at the moment, he's just shifting into his new shop. Um, he's had a fair ordeal trying to get it done with the weather and contractors and <laughs> man, oh man, I felt sorry for you. And my shed, or my new workshop here felt like it was um, taking forever to build and it went quick. <laughs> I don't know how you kept your cool, mate. I would have, I would have been losing it. Every time you seem to make a move, you're getting either hammered by the weather and storms or the contractors are <laughs> giving you the shits. But anyway, you got there and you, you, you're starting to get in there, which is good. So, I don't even know where we're going to put you, mate. Um, we're going to have to go down here. I'll get you straight. Awesome. There you go, mate. You're on the door. Thanks very much, Tom. And uh, Tom also sent a steric decimal equivalent down on the floor now. Steric's decimal equivalent chart, which is very very handy to have um, I dare say I got one on my wall near my bench here and I might leave this one on the on the lathe I think because it's always handy and I haven't got a small one like this so thank you very much mate I, I really appreciate that look at that hidden down in your envelope I didn't see it you might get a double whammy on here, Tom. You're going to be up here twice, mate. Just got to learn how to get into this one. Oops. Fill a gap here somewhere above the door, above the handle. There we go, mate. <laughs> You're here twice. Cheeky banger. Thanks, Tom. G'day, guys, and welcome back. Um, this is going to be a bit of a project, this one. Um, what happened was, a bit of a story to this, um, young fella's mate um, said to me, bring your bike up and camp tonight in the swag and we'll, because they've got a bit of land, and um, just have a night out in the bikes in the swag. So, took the young fella up there and... Um, Young fella's mate, his father Chris, and his brother Peter, I know quite well. And um, Pete said to me, I've got a little job for you. I said, oh, yeah, righto. What is it? He said, well, Chris found his ride on lawnmower. It was on Facebook, I think, uh, locally, on Marketplace. So it's a, a Cox Zero Turn. And it was going cheap, so he snabbled her up. Anyway, it had a, a, the, both the spindles in the deck were buggered. So they go to the mower shop, and the bloke at the shop says, Holy shit. He said, You wouldn't believe it. He said, A bloke was in here yesterday chasing the same parts. How ironic is that? And he said, Well, it's not ironic at all. He said, I'm the poor bastard who bought it. And he said, Well, you're the poor bastard who can't buy the parts because they're discontinued. <laughs> So, Pete said, can you make these spindles for us? I said, no dramas. That's what they are. Get that out of there. 
They're a pretty basic spindle and this one's it's pretty wild. It's been welded up there before in the past. Um, 52mm OD and a 25mm ID bearing. Um, so all we got fully goes on here with a 20mm ball. Now these are 25mm journals. Then you've got the hub, then it's got a, a, a dimple on the end, and this plate gets machined up and welded on afterwards. So I've got a piece in the lathe at the moment that I've started machining down from from here back, and then I'll spin it around, then I'll do the, the other features on the front. I do the, the dimple on the front, and then I've got a piece of plate there. I'll put on it. And we've got to drill a four hole bolt pattern, which I don't have a rotary table, nothing, so it's just going to be set out by old school ways, or my way, if it works. And we're going to make two of them. So there you go. You can get caught pretty easy. And apparently, the fella who sold them, the mower, said, Oh, I'm not very mechanically minded, and, and yeah, I don't know what's wrong with it. It just, just doesn't mow. Well, of course it don't mow because one spindle is completely gone. They don't even, you said, oh, that come off. I don't know where it is. And it's actually tore it clean out of the housing. Still got the outer races in the, um, in the, in the hub. But there's no inner race of the bearing or anything. It's just torn it out and apparently it disappeared. So, anyway, yeah, what it is is what it is. And we'll have a crack at getting it going and try and fix it for them. This is a bit of a sketch I drew of it. Um, <clears throat> I've really got to thank Emma again for this book. Um, it's bloody awesome. You know, you don't realise how we, you know, how, how a book like this can make your life easy. Bloody awesome. Thank you very much, Emma. Much appreciate this. I've used it quite a lot. Um, so I've done a rough sketch and... This is where I'm, I'm working from here, here down at the moment. I'm just roughing all this in. And then obviously let it cool down. And then, because it is pretty hot already, um, cool down and then I can do these journals to the right dimension and just out to 20 mil for the bore, for the, for the pulley to slide on. And it's got to have a keyway in here too, a uh, five mil keyway slot. As you can see there, and she's had a life. bring you up to speed a bit if you've got a keen eye you'll know that's not the same piece because there's the first one um, I wasn't I thought this material was a lot harder than what I what I yeah, what I thought but it's not it's actually shit it's pretty pretty darn soft um, so I swapped out and this is a stub axle off, a, off an axle <laughs> out of a trailer which is bloody hard I can tell you so I've swapped out and gone with that now this is to the right dimension of 20 mil these both journals are sitting on neat 25 um, the bloody tip on the cutter started going 
but anyway, it's only, it's only where the pulley sits, it's not going to affect anything, there's a bit of a mark, a bit of a rough spot there, but I'm not worried about it at all. So what I'm going to do now is drill and tap. Um, the original one had, well, the bolt to come out of it, or sort of come out of it, was fine thread, so I've gone with a fine thread again. Um, I'm going to go 3824. So I've just got to drill this now, drill and tap it, and I can take it out. I've got a little feature on this end to do here first, uh, up against your shoulder. Um, I can take it out, spin it around, and yeah, do it to length. And then put a little dimple on the end of it. Um, it's meant to be 45 mil. This is about 43. But it's going to be about 41 by the time I clean it up. Which is not going to affect it at all. So um, it's the closest material I've got. The only other piece I've got is a piece of 3 inch or 2.5 inch. And I don't want to drill out a machine just to get that off. Just to to gain, you know, 3 mil. I don't think it's going to affect it at all. So I'll work out how deep I've got to go and then we'll start that, eh? You know, you can see a little blue mark there. That's about 35 mil deep. That's what the old one's got, so that's what the new one gets. closest I've got to a letter Q drill is 2164 so I think it was double check that yeah 2164 is the closest I've got so and it's new so it should drill well Put a bit of a chamfer on there and I'll tap it. Alright, so we can do this without smashing a tap off. Shouldn't have said that.
shit. The inside's already touch under. It's not going to hurt. Be right. Okay, it's got to have a 12 mil radius. I'll bring the other part over and show you what I mean. Um, see this radius here? It's 12 mil. I've got a 12 mil button tool, so I've got to put that that in there now. That'll be next. Okay, I'm pretty much set. I measured it all up. And I had to move in five mil from this face, so I touched off the edge of the edge of the tool on this face, uh, moved over five mil, um, set the carriage stop. So we just hope to Christ it works. Touch more. From what I can make out here, journal's right, the journal's right, that's right, all these features here are in, or by the chamfer on the top, um, which I'll do when I'm going to spin it around to put the, to cut this depth and to put that duple dimple on the end. Um, I can, yeah, I'm pretty, pretty confident now, I've, I've got broke these edges. Um, I'll break all the edges actually. So I'm pretty confident I can take it out now and and um, machine the features on the other end. Now when I spin it around, when I put it back in the chuck, this is going to be wobbling around like an old, yeah, you know what? Because um, <coughs> this did have a slight bend of this material and I've machined that out. So whatever I turn now is going to be turned true to these to these journals so it didn't really matter so should be right Marks. 
So from this mark back, it's all got to go. This has got to have the dimple on it, which is going to be 11 millimeters long. Yep. Yeah. And it's just got to be cleaned up to make it as big, keep it keep it as big as I possibly can. So. But I'm just going to skim over this now and just take it, yeah, get it nice and clean. Dirty hot. Very that's hot. So in theory there should be about 10 mil left to go. 10 mil on the dial, 20 mil on the off the diameter here. Yeah. 19 19 thousands. We're talking millimetres for thousands because this on the actual part, on the original part, this is Imperial, it measures 500 there, half inch. So. And that's straight over there. Anyway, we'll have a cup of tea. It's cooled down heaps and it's, I measured it um, with the. Uh, Micrometer that does tenths as well, and it shrunk about four tenths, believe it or not. <laughs> believe me, why? Sure, I tenth there on the dial, and that should be it. Drag out quite a lot. Ah, oh, that shits me. Just change that tip out, see if I can win this time.
Thank you, Sheila. 500 on the dot. Uh, very really happy with that. Double check myself again. There we go. I'm happy. I'm really happy with that. Um, set up here to do the keyway. Um, the key that was in the last one was a 5mm key. Now, I don't have any 5mm end mill sadly because let's just say they didn't cooperate and they didn't make it through the task they were put to do at a certain time and they died. I got a 4mm one. The only 4mm one I have. Well, change of plan. I've gone with a 6mm end mill. I'm going to put a 6mm key in because I haven't got a 5mm one. The 4mm one I had, um, yeah, your ears sharper than it, so 6mm it will be. Which it won't hurt it. But I will go about 3mm deep, probably 2.5. Uh, three mil deep keyway and the borderline of being too deep really but anyway it's in there now I ain't changing it <laughs> 